Hey, if it wasn't a good day, everybody. I did a reaction to the Phillies' four to one win with some more ranch and stuff. We have to do better in order to keep building and getting better going into the playoffs. Please check that out if you haven't already, and like, comment, and subscribe. We appreciate the support of the YouTube channel, Sports Fanatic News, and all the podcasts that we post on it. Thank you all so much. But a source told Jim Salisbury that our first overall pick from 2016, Mickey Moniak, is going to be caught up. Now he is obviously not starting tonight. But a source told him he's getting caught up. That's very exciting news. I still have confidence, like Shane does, at Chasing the Pennant. Please check that out if you haven't already. Our podcast over there on Mickey Monia. But today's lineup is Andrew McCutcheon in left field leading off. Bryce Harper at DH batting second. Alec Bohm playing first base again where he had some very nice defensive plays. Hitting third again. Diddy Gregorius, who's very good in that spot, hitting fourth at shortstop again. Gene Segura back at third base, hitting fifth. Andrew Knapp hitting 6th at catcher, and then you got Kingery hitting 7th at 2nd, Hazley hitting 8th, filling in for Harper in right field, who's at DH today, hitting 8th, and then you have Roman Quinn, who's playing center field, hitting ninth. The Phillies just have to keep establishing it at the top of the order. Kutch has been doing so good at establishing it at the top of the order lately. I think Bryce is going to really get going more at the two spot, especially if Alec Bone continues to be a young stud rookie that just hits the ball to all sides of the field in the three spot. That helps very much and immensely. Then you got Diddy Gregorius, who I love in the cleanup spot. This guy's like a jack of all trades player in a sense of you of the lineup aspect. You can really put him wherever you want. I mean, if you want to lead him off, it ain't recommended with the power and RBI potential he has. He has done it in the past and been successful. Hitting him second works, hitting him third works, hitting him fifth works, and hitting him clean up where he's a perfect player to have. That's why I believe we need to re-sign him as well. And then Real Muto's not playing today, but it does seem like he's fairly close to coming back. And also, another injury news, Arietta on his hamstring. He thought it wasn't as big of a deal as Joe Girardi said. They're going to take a bigger look at it and definitely get a test on it to see what grade of a degree it is. But he did pitch in the 2017 playoff after having a similar injury to his other leg at the end of that season. So we'll see what happens there. Obviously, Jake ain't close to what he was during that 2017 run with the Cubbies. But he is a guy that has fought through innings for us. And as they said in the postgame yesterday, we're just depleted at the starting pitching. So hopefully he can come back and continue to just battle and gruel through some innings for us as the tough stir he is. So I I like our lineup tonight. I really do like Kutch leading off. I like Bone being at the three spot. I love Adam Hazley being back in the lineup. I think he should have been starting yesterday in the first place, as you all know. And we'll really see how locked in uh, he is because he's been on a good run, but we're facing Jacob DeGrom, the game's best tonight, going up against this year, one of the game's best in Zach Wheeler and a guy that, Just like Cole going elsewhere might just take off in his next destination, which for Garrett Cole was, of course, the Astros, and now is doing the same, really hitting his groove again in New York after pitching like a great top three, but now is pitching like Garrett Cole again in recent starts. So Wheeler's been at the peak of his game. These guys also had a mini competition going on in-house when they were both on the Met. Uh, Obviously, DeGrom heavily pitched out, out pitched Wheeler, excuse me, per seasons, but in certain months of the season, in 2018, I remember all the great stats, MLB Network, they pitched lockstep for lockstep in about a two-month period, and same happened last year. So, this is going to be a very fun matchup, a battle of two good buddies, and I really think the Phillies, with Zach Wheeler on the bump, went up against DeGrom, the Phillies have been scoring for Wheeler this year, our offense has been good, they've been playing pretty good behind Wheeler, I think that continues tonight. And we somehow find a way to uh, squeak out a couple runs. And then Wheeler's going to pitch well. And we're going to be able to beat the Mets even with DeGrom pitching. The Mets lineup is Brandon Nimmo leading off. Who, of course, is a very uh, solid hitter um, himself. A good young player. But uh, you need to uh, be careful with him. But he's not to the level, like I said, on the chase independent of Boehm. Michael Conforto hitting second, uh, Nimmo's in center, Conforto's in right. At DH, you got J.D. Davis in third. Dominic Smith, who's a great fielder, hitting fourth at first base. Cano hitting fifth at second. Frazier at third, hitting sixth, a Phillies killer, so be careful with him. Jeff McNeil hitting seventh. Andreas Jimenez, sorry if I said that wrong, Andreas Jimenez, hitting eighth at shortstop. And then Wilson Ramos hitting ninth, the Buffalo. So, I really like the Phillies' chances. They got the harder win, which I thought we would get, because Arietta has a 3-10 ERA in his career and a pitched seven great innings against them this year already against the Metropolitans. So, he got it done again 
against the Mets, even through what it sounded like in his interview, seemed like he was feeling it a little bit. Because how he talked, if you go back and watch Jake's post game, made it seem like, well, when he lifted his leg, like it was fine. Otherwise, when he lifted his legs, that's when he felt like he thought he got shot or something like that. Then that makes it seem like maybe he was a little bothered by a sore leg, and then all of a sudden it just went when he went to, like he said, set for his pitch. But best wishes to him. Hope he's able to come back. I have liked his post-game interviews, I must say, a lot more this year than past years where he would kind of push blame. He hasn't done that as much uh, this season, so I do really like that as well. But this has just been a short video looking ahead to the Phillies and Mets tonight. Let's go, Phillies. Continue to ring that bell. Have a great, safe, and pleasant night, everybody. Peace out. This is Sports Fanatic News, by the way. I'm Joe Borick, and please like, comment, and subscribe. But also, I forgot to mention one more thing, and that one more thing is I wanted to bring up Jojo Romero. He's my star of the season, let alone week. The kid just keeps doing his thing. Alex Carr predicted him completely right. Uh, he knew he was going to be good from the jump. Give a lot of credit to him, and if you don't follow him on Twitter, you should. He does amazing work, and he predicted him completely right. That's the last thing I forgot to say. But for Sports Fanatic News, I'm Joe Boyer. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Peace out, everyone.